Hi, and welcome to Barry Aftercare, the podcast, Barry Aftercare, the video. Barry Aftercare is something you listen to maybe while you exercise. Anyway, I'm your host. I'm Dr. Connie Stapleton, and it's real nice to have you with me today. Last week, very first week of November, we kicked off the Barry Aftercare series by talking about gratitude because it is the month in which we kind of focus on gratitude. However, I hope you make gratitude a practice in your everyday life because it's really a game changer. Today, I want to talk about something that I know is on everybody's mind, and I've alluded to it the last mm, couple videos ago when we talked about the holiday season being upon us and food season being amped up. We started with October, which was Halloween, and I hope that you are not still suffering from uh, an emotional fallout, perhaps if you overindulged in Halloween candy. However, let's focus on today. Let's focus on the positive. Let's focus on how to make our lives as well and good and happy and healthy as they can be. And today we're going to talk about enjoying the holidays and still losing weight. Now, you may be in the weight loss process. You know, you may be new to having had your surgery and that weight has fallen off easily, or maybe you're pre-surgery and you're listening to this and you want to, you know, make your surgery easier, your body the healthiest it can be for surgery, shrink up that liver to make it easier for the surgeon. So maybe you want to maintain your weight or even lose a few pounds, even during this holiday season to make your body in the best shape it can be in for surgery. Maybe you're well past your honeymoon phase in your bariatric surgery journey, and you do not want to regain during the holidays. In fact, you might want to continue to lose. You may want to lose a few pounds during the holiday season. So I've been thinking about that and thinking about it. And actually, usually I record these on Monday and today is Tuesday because I just couldn't put my finger on exactly what I wanted to talk about and how I wanted to talk about it. So I had some ideas brewing through my mind and I came across a really great article and it gave me a great idea, which hopefully you'll think is a great idea. Maybe you'll think it's a dumb idea. I don't know, but I hope that you will be a little courageous and a little spontaneous maybe and try some of this, some of what I'm going to be talking about so that you can actually get through the holiday season and lose some weight. A lot of people that I talk to have told me that whether it's in their pre-surgical weight (laughs) diet life, they did very, very well if they had a weight loss challenge. They always won the weight loss challenge at their office. They always, you know, um, gosh, can you hear that airplane going overhead? They always did really well if there was some sort of contest involved. So I got thinking about that and I thought, what can people do to really dig in and hone in on how to get through this holiday season and still lose some weight. So I came across a really great website, which offered 70 different 30-day challenges. Now I thought maybe a 30-day challenge is a bit much at this time of the year, but, and maybe 30-day challenges get a little boring or, you know, redundant. And it's like, ah, great for the first three or four days, but after that, you're over it. Well, I thought, Maybe it would be a really great idea, and you can do this however you want to do it. But I'm going to present this idea to you and encourage you to make this your own project. You may want to include others. They may be others in your immediate family or other people that you're going to be enjoying the holidays with. It might be people in your bariatric surgery circles. However you want to do this, I highly encourage you to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share some of the challenges and I will post the link to this this website or this article that I found because this is not my idea. It's my idea to encourage you to do some sort of a challenge because people typically do well on those and to invite some of your friends so that maybe you've got a little bit of a competitive edge and you want to win this challenge. And hey, maybe even put some prizes in there, maybe some prize money, whatever floats your boat. But 
I found this great article and I want to share it with you. And it was written by a man named Jack Clancy. So I'm not taking credit for his amazing ideas, but I'm going to share some of you, some of them with you. I'm not going to share all 70 of his ideas for challenges, but I'm going to share a few of these. And what I want you to do is think, okay, as we go through the holiday season, which is about, let's see, maybe 45, 50 days, probably closer to 50 through the end of New Year's, right? That's really when people are doing their baking and they're sharing it everywhere. It's everywhere in the grocery store. It's all over print media and billboards and commercials on the radio and on the television and then, you know, everywhere you go, it's holiday food, holiday food, holiday food. So let's help you set up a few challenges. And I would encourage you maybe do four or five of these, maybe do one every week. And you can break that down into, you know, prizes, little prizes throughout and maybe end this on January 2nd. And break this down into little increments of time. And if you have the same group involved for from now until January 2nd, then you can have four or five weeks. And every week there's a prize. And if somebody wins the prize, maybe three weeks in, you know, three weeks out of the seven, or however you do it, then they get the big prize. You figure that part out. But make the prizes nothing to do with food, okay? <laughs> maybe a gift certificate to a music station or a gift certificate to Netflix or something. Anyway, here's some great ideas. So you choose, think which of these you think would be a great idea. Or maybe if you have five people in your challenge group, each person gets to pick one for each of the five weeks, however you want to do it. Have some fun with this, but wouldn't it be awesome to be able to say that you went through this holiday season with zero regain and maybe even lost some weight. So I really think this is a fun idea. I hope that you will too. And I'm going to give you some ideas. Now, the guy who wrote this, Jack Clan Clancy, yes, I'm reading that correct, Jack Clancy, broke it into three different ideas. So he provided some 30-day nutrition challenges, some 30-day exercise challenges, and some 30-day lifestyle challenges. So maybe you want to mix these up. And again, make them five days, make them seven days, however you want to do this. But choose your favorites. And here's how you do this. You get your group together or you decide for yourself how you're going to do this. And you pick a start date. And then you get started, you track your progress, you share your results, either with yourself or with your group, and then do it again with a different challenge because it keeps you in that fun, playful, slight, competitive kind of attitude. And it gives you something to think about that's very health related, very much focused on your weight loss journey, your healthy lifestyle journey throughout this holiday season. Oh, the joy on January 2nd when you have lost weight through the holiday season, right? All right, so here's some of the nutrition challenges to help you stay on track and maybe even lose weight during these holidays weeks that are coming up. So I don't know if you focus on, you know, how you log your food, but one of the challenges is simply to log your food. So maybe it's like, let's all log our food for seven days or 10 days or however you want to do it. You may want to focus on calories. I don't know if calories are important to you, or maybe you want to focus in on the macros, you know, the different kinds of how many carbs did you have, how many proteins, how many fats, depending on where you're at, what your emphasis is, how you respond to these kinds of things. But it's a really good idea to get people involved and really track your food. That way you can Keep a great visual, you know, by looking at what you've written and you can have an accountability group. So it really meets a lot of the wonderful ways that bariatric patients stay on track anyway. And you might want to set a calorie goal or, you know, protein, carb, uh, fat, macronutrient goal, however you want to do it. But then at the end of the week, 
compare or maybe do it on a day-to-day -day basis, whatever works for you. But I love this idea for a challenge. Here's a great one too. How about for the next seven days or the next two weeks, however you divide up your challenge, no restaurants. No restaurants for the next blank many days. Because we know that when we go to a restaurant, every meal we tend to eat is at least 200 calories more. And we know that because of research and science and that's what they report. So you want to cut back on going to restaurants where maybe they have some festive holiday dishes, maybe they have some of your favorite holiday dishes, and you want to avoid that at this time of the year because there's going to be a lot of food everywhere anyway. So maybe avoid restaurants. Here's another challenge. Cook all of your food for the next week, meaning you cook your own breakfast, you take your own lunch that you have prepared. Maybe it's leftovers from the night before, but you've cooked that meal. Cooking all of your food. This is great because you know exactly what you're putting into your food as opposed to like if you're going out to restaurants, you don't know how much fat they use, you don't know what kind of oil they use. But when you're doing the actual cooking, you know, you get really hands-on with your food. You're planning what you're having. And you can look at the food and decide what you want to put into your body. And maybe with your challenge, this could be an added kind of thing. Maybe each of you chooses your own kinds of foods. And then at the end of the week, if somebody's lost a considerable more amount, more food weight than the rest of you, you can say, well, what the heck were you preparing that you lost this much weight? So that's kind of a fun one too. All right, so maybe you can do an increased protein challenge for a week. So maybe you're going by an 80, you want to get 80 grams of protein in every day for a week. Maybe you increase that to 100 or even 110. So you're working harder to get more protein in. And the reason bariatric patients love protein because it's very lean, it adds muscle, it helps you to stay fuller longer. And if you're eating real food, if you're getting your protein through real food, you're filling your stomach up with that high, that density, that quality food that's going to keep you fuller longer and not give you as much room to add anything else in there. So I love that. Here's another one. Increase your water content for seven days. It might be, let you say, let's, instead of drinking 64 ounces of water, let's all drink 96 ounces of water every day for a week and then compare because the water is going to keep you hydrated. It's going to keep you fuller longer. And you might be surprised at how much weight you lose just by increasing your water consumption. Who knows? Ooh, here's one, <sighs> especially at holiday time, right? No added sugar for seven days. Ah! It's Christmas cookie season. Wouldn't this be a great way? And make the prize really big on this one, right? Wouldn't it be a great way to stay away from all of those extra calories that are out there during the holiday season? Sugar being the biggest culprit when it comes to seasonal treats. So you might want to do this one for two weeks or you might want to do this one all through the month of November. I don't know. You choose. Or you may say, no added sugar except for one piece of pie on Thanksgiving. You make the rules. Talk about it with your group if you choose to do a group. But I think by doing these little challenges, you're going to find yourself really rocking your weight loss journey through the holidays. Here's another one. This is a great idea. This guy's smart. I love these ideas. How about no condiments for 30 days? So not adding any kind of mayonnaise or sugary filled ketchup or because uh, the condiments can add up. You know, I would say I'm a condiment kind of gal. And so I bet that if I knocked out honey mustard, I'd save myself a lot of calories. So you can enjoy the taste of your meal, your food without adding calories and unnecessary flavoring. So if you're going to cook your meals and do condiments at the same time, pick some really tasty dishes, right? Here's another challenge you could do. 
no bread or pasta or, you know, processed simple carbs for a whole week. That'd be a great one too, because a lot of the, the holiday treats come out of packages, right? And they, of course, it's similar to the sugar thing, but it's a, it's another way to do it. No processed carbs for 30 days. Ooh, here's one. How about, how about this one for seven days? No desserts of any kind. So no one piece of candy after your meal or one cookie at the end of the day, no desserts for seven to 10 days. How about this? For those of you who are big coffee fans, not just coffee fans, but coffee filled with all kinds of calorie fans, right? So maybe no creamers, no calorie filled, sugar filled creamers in your coffee or your tea. Ooh, that's a good one too. There's so many good ones. This guy's brilliant. Oh, no alcohol. How much more alcohol do people drink over the holidays? I'm not sure. But you need to know you and how much more alcohol do you tend to drink? Maybe you go to more holiday parties. Maybe you tend to host people. Maybe you tend to drink more wine with your meals because you have more fancy meals over the holidays. I don't know. But what I do know and what I've shared with you probably lots and lots and lots of times is alcohol can be real dangerous after weight loss surgery. And you know the reasons why. One, one alcoholic beverage feels like three to your system after you've had weight loss surgery. So there's an increased effect of alcohol after you've had weight loss surgery. And there's a butt ton of calories in alcohol. So, you know, do a little no alcohol challenge. Woo! Nice. No snacking, no snacking, zip, zilch, not a nothing. Now, as a bariatric patient, if your dietitian says you eat three meals and two snacks, you stick to that regimen. Bariatric basics means eating every three to four hours, always starting protein with protein, which includes your snacks, by the way. So if that's what your dietitian recommends for you, what this means is no unhealthy eating snacking, right? So if you have two snacks during the day and one is almonds and one is two hard boiled eggs, that's okay. No snacking on crap. No snacking on crap. All right. Or here's an alternative. If you're going to munch or snack, you snack on vegetables. If you're going to eat in between or in addition to your three meals, two snacks or five meals a day, however you call it, then you snack on nothing but vegetables. So if you go to a holiday party during this time, you snack on the broccoli and the carrots that are left out. And if it's not your no condiment week, maybe you can have your broccoli and carrots with a little bit of, you know, dressing on the side. So there you go. Here's another good one. Eat something green at dinner for 30 days or five days or seven days or however long your challenge is. But the idea here is increase your vegetable intake. Hopefully you're eating vegetables with your dinner anyway, but incorporate something green. And I have a patient who came to the retreat and she didn't tell anybody, but she knew herself. She was not a veggie eater. She did not eat a whole lot of veggies. Well, by the time she left that retreat, she was eating a lot of veggies because we had all kinds of veggies mixed in with the meals at the retreats. And she found that she actually enjoyed them. Sometimes you couldn't even taste them. We didn't hide them. We told the people what was in there, of course. But um, she found out that she actually liked some veggies. Or here's another one. Be sure you have three or maybe make it five servings of vegetables and or not too high sugar fruits every day for a week. Eat a bowel, eat a nutritious breakfast. So instead of the protein drink for breakfast, maybe have eggs and sausage or eggs and bacon. Have a, have a real food breakfast. As bariatric patients, you always want to eat breakfast and you want to get some protein in your body within two hours of getting up, right? So get those in that way. Those are some good ideas. There's some other ones that I didn't even mention, but you can look at the website yourself because I will put 
this website in the show notes for the podcast. And I will also post it um, as comment in the Berry Aftercare Facebook rooms or the websites where the video is posted. Now, as far as some exercise challenges, <laughs> one challenge might be just get off your butt and do some exercise for seven days. But here are some great ideas that this person has. And again, if you're doing this by yourself, you can set it for yourself. If you're doing it with your family, be a really great fun time to do these as a family activity, as a family challenge, or get a group of your bariatric friends. So walk blank minutes every day for a week. You guys decide how many minutes that might be, but every day do that. Or do yoga every day for a week. Try something different, right? People think, oh, yoga, what is that? yoga, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, don't talk to me because I love yoga, but maybe try some yoga. Well, I'm not going to go to a yoga class. You don't have to. Go to YouTube. There's all kinds of free yoga. There is chair yoga. There's slow, it's called slow flow yoga, beginner yoga, however you want to do it. But that's really a fun way to do it. Do some jump roping every day for a week. Just a minute. I heard somewhere recently, I think it was on a commercial for a jump rope actually, that jumping rope for 10 minutes every day has the benefits to the cardio system of 30 minutes of jogging. I don't know how true that is, but I believe it because jumping rope is not easy. So jumping rope, blank minutes every day for a week. And maybe you can just do one minute at a time. So if you're if your challenge is five minutes, do one minute at a time. How about this one? If you work in an office, no elevators for a week. So take in the stairs. How about 10,000 steps every day for seven days? If you kind of like doing that kind of thing. If you live in an area where the holiday season is warm, then maybe riding a bicycle outside for blank minutes every day for a week. However you want to do it, push-ups, squats, pull-ups, lunges, any kind, planks every day. Do some uh, Zumba. You can look that up online too. Find any kind of exercise. And this would be a really fun one to do like with your family and change it out every week because you can discover some different kinds of ways that you maybe enjoy exercising. Let everybody in the family or everybody in the challenge group Pick a different exercise. And if you, if you want to moan and groan about it, you could try it and see what you can do. Then there are some 30-day, he puts them in 30 days, but you can do them however many you want. Lifestyle challenges to help you with weight loss. So let me mention some of those before I wrap up. I totally love this. No TV in the evenings or all day. I'd make it all day. Oh my gosh. No television. Make it social media. Make it television and social media, however you want to do it for seven days. We, we do a lot of inactive kinds of things like watching TV and scrolling through our phones. They're completely passive. So giving up social media or screen time, whatever it happens to be, and replace it with doing something else. Maybe clean the closet. At least you're standing. You might not even miss it after all. Here's another good challenge. Set a bedtime and make sure you are in bed, lights out every day by that time. You'll be more rested. We all know that there's a correlation between weight and sleep. So we won't be neglecting ourselves. In fact, it might be a real treat to say, wow, I'm going to get to bed on time. That's awesome. So get to bed, enjoy the extra sleep. How about spending your lunch break? And even if you work at home, setting a time for a lunch break where instead of working or sitting at your desk and eating, you get up and you spend time walking. It's a great one. Maybe everybody finds a health and fitness app and everybody for seven days does the seven minute exercise of the day or whatever it happens to be. That's a really great one. Find an app and everybody participates in it. Oh, here's a great one. I totally love this one. So practice self-love every day. And I would even 
hone that in to be engage in positive self-talk intentionally for seven days. When you catch yourself engaging in any negative self-talk, be sure to change it to something positive or write down three things you did well every single day. Write down three things you're grateful for, which we talked about last week. Every single day, write down compliments you received during the day. Write down compliments you gave to people during the day. Those are all ideas for various challenges. Here's one. Eat your meals with family or friends. Even if you live alone, do a Zoom chat. Have dinner with somebody. Have conversation. Be mindful of what you're eating, but have a nice conversation with somebody while you're doing that. Another challenge would be no screen time, no reading, complete mindfulness while you're eating. I love that. Maybe food prep, something that you've always wanted to do, but maybe you're like, oh, it seems like so much work and so much time. Do it for a week. Everybody do it for a week and then compare what it was like. Read food labels for everything you eat for a week. I love that. No delivery, no takeout, no fast food, no Grubhub, no whatever those things are. I've never, ever, ever used one of those and don't intend to. <laughs> and here's another one. Wash your dishes by hand for a week. That's kind of a fun thing, right? It increases your neatness and it increases your standing time and it increases your activity and it takes time and maybe you're doing it with somebody and you're having conversation. So that's really, really cool. Or pick out some other activities like, you know, fold the laundry with a family member instead of doing it yourself or having them do it and have some conversation during that time. Find some things to be happy about. I had a weekend with a girlfriend this past weekend, speaking of good self-care. And we just hung out for a couple of days. She, we live different. We live far apart. So we met in the middle and just had a fun, fun time. And we were talking about some different podcasts. And she listens on a regular basis to the Happiness Lab. And I've listened to it now and then. But she was telling me about a person she listened to who's also got a book out there. But the person was talking about finding delights throughout the day. And it was really fun because she and I found things to smile about or laugh about or chuckle about or see other people doing that were happy. And we were like, wow, there's a delight. Oh my gosh, that was such a delight. So maybe look for delights in your day or come up with your own challenges. But I tell you what, I would love it if some of you would do this and would report back to me about some of the challenges that you did and about the results, did you maintain or lose weight during this holiday season? And I'm, I'm excited because I really think this is a great idea for getting through the holidays with no regain. So let me know. And on that note, I would also love it if you guys would contact me and let me know what kind of podcast you would be interested in or what kind of Barry Aftercare videos you would be interested in, different topics. You can reach me by email at cstapletonphd at gmail.com. So please do. And while we're on all this commercial that I'm doing for my email address, please encourage other people to listen to the Barry, After, Barry Aftercare podcast. And if you want more, you can join Barry Aftercare, where there are two to three videos every week on different topics, and not just by myself, but by a, a bariatric exercise physiologist, by a bariatric dietitian, by a woman who's, who's written a book called Through Thick and Thin, and talks about being a family member and support person of someone struggling with the disease of obesity and going through the weight loss surgery process. So please encourage other people to participate in the Barry Aftercare podcast and the entire program. I would really appreciate that. And I sincerely hope you will contact me and let me know about your challenges that you established. All right. I'm going to be talking again later this week about the rewards and benefits of accomplishing 
small personal goals. And that may include completing one of these challenges. It may include saying five things to yourself that are nice every day. It may, what are the rewards and benefits of accomplishing small personal goals? So we'll talk about that later in the week. I'm Barry Aftercare, and I thank you so much for joining me. I have tremendous gratitude for each and every one of you. Make it a great one. It's your health, your responsibility this day, every day, even through the holiday season. Take care.